Robotics just had its chat GPT moment, and artificial general intelligence could be here way sooner than we think. In this episode, I'm going to break down this massive breakthrough in AI for robotics and which companies I'm investing in as a result. The biggest winner might surprise you. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. Earlier this month, Google DeepMind released a paper showing that you can make a general purpose robot by training it with data from a wide variety of other robots doing different kinds of tasks. Google partnered with 33 academic labs to collect data from 22 different form factors of robots, also called embodiments. Then they used that data to create a massive library of training data called the OpenX Embodiment Dataset, as well as an AI model called RTX. RTX works kind of like GPT, but for robots. In fact, they're both transformer-based models. No, not that kind of transformer. At least, not yet. The GPT in ChatGPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer, and the RT in RTX stands for Robotics Transformer. And they have a few important things in common that tech investors should understand. At a high level, Google's OpenX dataset is kind of like the data that OpenAI used to train their GPT models, except this one is made up of instructions and tasks for robots instead of text and code written by humans. And where GPT-4 predicts the next line of text based on a prompt, these RT models predict the movements a robot should take based on its current position and the instructions that it's been given. Think about the insane pace of ChatGPT's evolution since it was released a little under a year ago. As GPT was upgraded from version 3 to 3.5 to 4, as it got access to third-party plugins, and as it learned to deal with new kinds of inputs like images and code, the amount of problems that ChatGPT could solve skyrocketed. So did the accuracy of its solutions. I think we're about to see the same thing happen with physical robots. In fact, it's already happening. This massive breakthrough happened just two months after RT2, which came out just eight months after RT1. And to show you just how big of a deal this is, you need to understand what RT2 does in the first place. Don't worry, I'll keep it quick. RT2 is basically a large language model for robots. It lets them learn from robotics data and data on the internet, which lets robots do some basic reasoning, just like ChatGPT. That means that robots can understand and execute commands that they've never seen before, which is a very big deal. Why? because now a robot can choose the best tool for a specific task without being explicitly programmed to use it. Or it can make a snap judgment call about what to do and where to place a specific object, just like humans easily do every day. The magic here is that you can give a robot a command using natural language that isn't well-defined. Let's say we want to ask a robot to put a strawberry in the correct bowl, a task that's trivial for humans. But for most robots today, you'd have to train it to understand what strawberries look like in different orientations, teach it what correct means in the first place, and so on. But since DeepMind's RT2 model uses text and pictures from the web to learn how people communicate, the robot already understands what strawberries look like and what we're most likely asking it to do when we say place the strawberry in the correct bowl. The robot will figure out what correct means in context, even though it was never trained on this specific task. In this case, the correct bowl is the one that already has strawberries in it. But again, we didn't tell it that. The robot reasoned that out itself. RT2 can complete a wide variety of tasks with objects that the model has never seen before, in environments that it's never been in before. So in a different setting, this robot would put the strawberries on the right shelf in a grocery store or next to the rest of the fruit in your fridge. I'm just kidding. I know you don't have any fruit in your fridge. But seriously, I do think that DeepMind's RT2 is a big step towards artificial general intelligence, and this is worth paying attention to as an investor. You'd expect these kinds of crazy innovations to come from startups, but this is coming from one of the biggest tech giants in Silicon Valley. Speaking of which, Moomoo is a trading app built in Silicon Valley to help investors execute winning strategies. There are no commissions, no account minimums, and no hidden fees. And they have a ton of great features to help you make great investments regardless of the size of your portfolio. They have great research tools that cover analyst ratings, financial and operating data, earnings calls, and institutional trackers for every publicly traded company. They also have up-to-date market news and analyst expectations, all right inside the app all completely free and easy to access, which makes Moomoo a solid choice for beginners, advanced investors, and everyone in between. And if you sign up right now, you can get up to 16 free stocks, including a full share of Tesla or Google. All you need to do is download the app using my link below, keep your funds at that level for at least 60 days, and enjoy your free stocks. 
but this offer ends soon, so make sure to get started today. And a big thanks to Mumu and to you for supporting the channel. All right, now that you've seen how special RT2 is, you'll appreciate just how much RTX improves its performance, just like GPT-4 did compared to GPT-3. I think it's important to keep drawing these parallels, so you see that generative AI is not just hype. It's going to be absolutely everywhere and soon. When an AI model is retrained with this OpenX embodiment data that I talked about earlier, it gets an X tacked onto the end of its name. So RT1 becomes RT1X, RT2 becomes RT2X, and so on. Check out what happens when you take a robot running on RT2 and just retrain it using DeepMind's OpenX dataset without making any changes to the underlying AI model. RT2X performs three times better than RT2 when it comes to emergent skills for robots. Emergent skills are tasks that involve objects and movements that are not present in the original RT2 dataset, but do exist in another dataset for a completely different robot. So the big breakthrough here is that training an AI model with data from completely different kinds of robots can give any robot new skills that let it perform completely new kinds of tasks. That's not what you'd expect, which means this research is about to open a lot of brand new doors for AI in general and robotics specifically. But wait, there's more. RT1 is DeepMind's AI model for general robotic controls, which means it doesn't use web data or really have a lot of natural language capabilities. It turns out that RT1X performs 50% better than models that were developed for specific robotic tasks like operating a kitchen, routing cables, opening doors, and so on. Think about that. This one multi-purpose model performs tasks much better than specialized models trained to do just that one thing. That's the power of this OpenX embodiment dataset. It's basically a Wikipedia for robots. And remember, this training data comes from 22 different kinds of robots, which means that it can be used to train many different kinds of robots, not just robotic arms, but robots on four wheels, or say, humanoid robots on two legs. And that's where things get really interesting, because guess who has one of the largest fleets of four-wheeled robots and is working on mass-market, general-purpose humanoid robots right now? That's right, Tesla. I think Tesla will end up being one of the biggest beneficiaries of Google's breakthrough RTX paper. Let me show you why. I recently rewatched Tesla's last two AI days, and they have many individual AI models that handle different subtasks for autonomous driving, which isn't too different from having many specialized robots for individual tasks. For example, labeling is the step where an AI model tries to figure out what every object that it can see is. Is this a road that the car can drive on? Label it purple. Is it a sidewalk or other flat surface that the car probably shouldn't drive on? Label it red. Is it another car? Label it blue. It's important to get these labels right because the other AI models can't really decide what to do if they don't know what they're looking at. Then there are road lanes. Tesla had to develop an entire language to describe lanes called LaneNet. Lanes are really tricky because unlike other types of objects, lanes are part of the road itself. So just labeling them purple isn't enough to tell Tesla's self-driving AI what it should be doing. Tesla's AI model for lanes keeps track of where a car can end up at any given time based on which lane it's currently in, the length of the road, and the kinds of turns that a car would have to make to get from point A to point B. And then there's Tesla's AI model for volumetric occupancy, which is where the full self-driving software divides all of its surroundings into tiny cubes and tries to figure out which cubes to pay attention to. It does this by assigning each cube a color based on whether or not it thinks whatever is occupying that volume is going to move. So tan cubes might contain buildings or lampposts or mailboxes, but they're all tan because those things will never move. Red volumes are occupied by things that could move, like a pedestrian or a parked bus. And once the bus in the scene starts to move, it turns blue, which means that Tesla's FSD software thinks that it's going to keep moving. Then another AI that focuses on route planning predicts the paths of everything in the red or blue volumes and adjusts its own route accordingly. And if you watch Tesla's last two AI days or my videos breaking them down, you know that there are dozens of other driving tasks that Tesla's AI team has been working on, each more complex than the last. The problem is that this rules-based approach that connects multiple AI models forces the Tesla team to constantly update hundreds of thousands of lines of code as cars encounter new edge cases all over the world, which isn't a very scalable approach in the long run. That's why, even after years of being on the bleeding edge of AI and autonomous driving, Tesla is shifting to a fully neural network-based approach with FSD12. 
This new version of Tesla's full self-driving software teaches itself to drive by learning on billions of frames of video, showing how humans actually do it, just like ChatGPT trained itself to generate answers by processing billions of lines of human text. And remember, Tesla's Optimus robot leverages a lot of the same AI to navigate the world, breaking its environment down into cubes, predicting the paths of moving objects that it can see, and adjusting its own route accordingly. So I'm sure we'll see huge improvements in Optimus after Tesla switches to FSD 12 as well. And now we've come full circle, because switching to a fully neural network based approach is exactly what allows Tesla's cars, Optimus, and even the many different kinds of robots inside their gigafactories to take advantage of something like DeepMind's RTX AI model and OpenX embodiment dataset. After all, RT1X performs specialized tasks with an average of a 50% higher success rate than specialized robots. And RT2X outperforms RT2 by 3x at emergent skills that the robot hasn't seen before. Tesla wouldn't even need to change the neural net based architecture of FSD12. They could just retrain it with this additional data, call it FSD12X, and then compare it to the base version of FSD12 to see which tasks see the biggest improvements. And even if they only see a 10% performance improvement across the different tasks that Optimus, the Gigafactory robots, and their cars are already doing, that's a massive win that only extends their already gigantic lead over other automakers. And even if they decide not to use DeepMind's model or dataset at all, I have no doubt that we'll see Tesla implement their own version of this research across every robot they deploy. Just like they pivoted from a rules-based self-driving approach to a neural network-based planner after ChatGPT showed them what's possible. So there you have it. Google just made a massive breakthrough in robotics that brings us one step closer to artificial general intelligence. And as one of the biggest robotics companies on the planet, Tesla is the only automaker that can take advantage of it. And I also have no doubt that this won't be priced into either company until way after you watch this video, which is why it's worth paying attention to the science behind the stocks. So if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.